Welcome to Owen and Baru's Barbecue. Thanks for joining us today. We, we're so excited to talk about The Mandalorian. Uh, the TV show just dropped on the air. We're cooking up something really special for you tonight. Uh, and it was in that episode. It was fried spit roasted monkey lizards. So mm. if you like those monkey lizards, and I know you do, we've got a couple great chefs in the, in the house tonight for you. Uh, Chris? You you just walked out of the desert. I'm so glad that you're back. I'm glad to be back. What desert are you referring to? I don't know. Tatooine Desert. Okay. But more importantly, <laughs> we have a big, big special guest on this, this episode. Uh, Crazy Hank, a.k.a. Jack Glatfelter, is finally on Owen and Brew's Barbecue. Now he oh, can't I, 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 complain I had, about it. I had to beg. I really did. did. Uh, but I, I know I'm replacing Nick tonight. Do I have to hate the episode? No, no. no Nick doesn't no. hate everything. So okay. He just, so he's to... just very critical. Okay. All right. Yeah. Even when he when he likes something, he's critical of it. I think. That's I know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. How how do I come? I mean, because I, I I did like the episode, but I don't want to be too gushy because that wouldn't be Nick. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to fill in for Nick's, Nick's streaks, just like the Mandalorian doesn't have to fill in. For <laughs> and I didn't come in from the desert. I was just here at my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, that Chris hasn't been on the show for a while. Uh, I get it. I get uh, it. And, yeah. and, yeah, except you know, I was on the last episode. So, I mean. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, anyways, but you know, you know, we've all been waiting, though. I mean, it feels like for a very long time. Uh, and it, the, the day has finally arrived. And that day is today, which is the premiere of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. It was, it was like Christmas Day, right? I know. And like, I have spoken. <laughs> That's all you're going to say for about the whole episode. I have How many people probably called in sick today at work, for work? Uh, I think some of my students wanted to call in sick. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it uh, it was great. Uh, the the app dropped. Um, and also, I kind of knew that there'd be some glitches <laughs> along the way. So um, and so, I know that some people weren't able to to watch or stream it immediately. But I I didn't have any troubles. What about you guys? None. No, I I thought so. I stayed up till a little bit after midnight last night just to see if maybe for whatever reason it would it would air Eastern time. Even though everywhere the online says it's not going to be until three a.m. Eastern or you know midnight West Coast, but I stayed up just to see, and it, no, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't air. <laughs> uh, so I woke up, I got to work, and uh, I sat in a lot of traffic to get to work today. Yeah, and it may or may not have passed the time illegally. <laughs> Did it may or may not hold up, even if you were. The Watch. steering wheel held it up. Oh, oh, I mean the show. You mean? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it was, it was. I loved the open, right? Because I think everyone kind of thought that maybe you'd have that traditional Star Wars. And it was just, it was, it was not. You know, it, it was, it was a completely different take. And oh it, yeah. It was, it was dark, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was good, um, and gritty. You know, um, I, I don't know how far if we want. We're gonna get into the, talking about the show this far, but I think I think all aspects. But let's let's go ahead and get Jack. Jack, you've you've you'd hardly know anything about Star Wars, um, from my understanding. That's why we've never had. Well, I, I, I'm not like I'm not like I wouldn't say a Star Wars geek, but you know, I I did see the original. I kid, I out. kid. I, and, I know, I know. You saw the original, and you were a big fan. You waited in line, you waited in line, and like everybody else, and. I'm I'm not a huge I'm, I'm I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I I compared to others like well probably you two, I'm just I'm just a guy. But Jack actually didn't know that the Mandalorian was a Star Wars show until it popped up on Disney Plus. <laughs> One thing that Jack does know is westerns, right? You're a big fan of westerns. I'm a huge fan of westerns, so obviously I love the beginning of this. Right away, you know what? If we're going to talk about it, yeah, I, I was thinking the whole time. I go, this could be Clint Eastwood, a spaghetti western man with no, you know, no name. Where he, man of very few words, he walks in. I'll let you guys go further, but that was my first impression. I go, the Mandalorian could be Clint Eastwood. 
Well, that's just it. That's that's the that's that's Star Wars soup to nuts right there. Yeah. So it, it started off as um as George Lucas's idea to be a, a space western, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, um, and going along those lines, it, it it absolutely fulfills that role. And and Boba Fett was created as a character like the man with no name, right? So so a lot of him was modeled after. So I think to call it back around, you mm -hmm. know, and, and to go to the roots and the origin of of where this character comes from. To play it up with a little bit of uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, and and that theme song, right? Yeah, that that theme song is such a call out to uh, Marconi, you know, like as well, the music. As, the music was great in this ep episode. Mm -hmm. So let, let's let's talk about the first scene, right? So the, okay. the first scene, we we, we are you know we, I think we've seen bits and pieces of this in the in the trailers up up leading up to the to the premiere. But it's clear that there's somebody being um, kind of um, roughed up a little bit in a, at, a, at a bar, at a cantina, right? Um, we don't know. I, I was not aware of the race of alien that that was that was in the bar that was um, kind of being pushed around. Um, do you, do you want to know? Yeah. Look. It's, they're called Mithril. Mithril. Oh, okay. And he's right. a fledgingly Mithril. No. So. I thought that. it was Blue Man Group, but that's um, I was <laughs> so <ahead>. depressed. <laughs> you're, so, you're doing a great job. <laughs> it, it, was, it was definitely um, it, it felt like a western when when he walked into that pub, right, or that cantina, and he just walks up to the bar, very calm, cool, collected, and then almost as if the bartender knew, like he slid that mug across the across the bar and he just grabbed it and started smashing people. And you know that's kind of like the the cold open to to the Mandalorian. Where he's, he's getting into like a little bit of a bar fight, um, and then later on you find out that it was a bounty. Well, I like it, but it has the classic. You know, he he's not saying anything. He walks. He sits down at the bar. He, the guy, sit. he doesn't even sit. He just stands there. And the the guy is upset. They're the bounty hunters. Upset that he spilled his beer. Yep. You spilled my drink. You spilled my drink. And it's just classic. You know where the guy's. Not, and you think you know he's gonna? They try to go over there and intimidate him. Of course, like you said, bartender slides the beer over, and, and all hell breaks loose. And yeah. we had a great, do we had a great door scene, which I yes. thought was pretty exciting. Yes, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be Star Wars if somebody's not decapitated in some way, right? Yeah, I just thought well, that, that was that was a, just an amazing scene. I loved it. Well, I'll tell you that that's something that we haven't seen in Star Wars, right? We've seen a lot of the Star Wars doors or hatches, kind of like. Mm -hmm. like those crazy fast opens and closes and we, we've never seen the what happens if you can't indiana jones one of these doors and um, we, we found out in the mandalorian that's gonna sure. it's gonna traumatize my kids going through uh, the grocery store do doors now yeah <laughs> <laughs> they are not gonna wait for that thing to close on them so that so that ruffian got uh severed in half yes with his legs dropped to the floor split in two yeah um it, and this, I also I love the actors, the the actors that are talking. I mean, this uh, fledgling Mithril guy, uh, which we really don't ever learn his name, um, at least from what I could could gather. It, 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 they, if you put the closed captions on, it does it does show his name, and I forgot what it was. I apologize. It, the closed caption for me just said Mithril speaking. Oh, is it, so, maybe, maybe I thought that was his name. I guess that's what mine said also because I turned it on so I could get the names, but that's what it was saying. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, he's obviously the bounty. It, it almost reminded me of Paul Giamatti or, you know, somebody like trying to talk their way out of like, I don't know why I kept thinking of, of Giamatti, but like just his character kind of like the way he sounded just reminded me yeah. of that, you know, and, and at first he, oh, we have to mention the, the, the river sticks here. It, it kind of reminded me of that, uh, image Rhea, of the the boat kind of leading you to crossed hell, you know, but he's really just getting a boat to, to where the ships are. Um, and he doesn't take the droid ship first, right? Who does? I wouldn't right. take the droid ship. Was yeah, this was no droids. <laughs> was we left that out. We had, left, well, there was a cool line though. He had before as he picked before he takes him. Oh, okay. He says, I can bring you in warm. And then he goes to his gun or I can bring you in cold. Uh, uh and I said, I love that. I just it was, instead of bringing him dead or alive, it was just it was just a great line. And uh, like I said, I, I love westerns, and this this thing was just great, just reeling me in. This is so cute. Jack's becoming a Star Wars fan. 
<laughs> well, it was, a, it was it was a great line. I mean, it was yeah, just, it was it, it the was way good. it was the way it was done. He, he, you know, the, the the directing and the camera angles were perfect too. Because he goes, you know, I can bring you in cold, and he goes to his gun. The guy goes, okay. I'm good. But anyway, yeah, and, I'm sorry. And, and, and when they're waiting for the ship, it, uh, Myth, the Mithril guy's like, dude, I'll call an Uber. Like, no worries. I'll, I'll yeah. get a nicer car. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, I have the coin. Like, I'll, 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 I'll get a ship out here to pick us up. He's like, no, yeah. no. And and he, he, he did this ship, too. Get, he did this but, ship. But, he's like, what? This thing? But the first, later, he changes like, his tune. The hoopty of all land speeder hoopties rolls up with some, like, old guy driving it and, and the engine's backfiring and there's just like we're gonna get into that thing to go across this, <laughs> this, this frozen river of, of dragons um and and they do but yeah you're right they get to they get to the shipyard or presumably the shipyard or at least where he he landed his ship um he just starts talking trash about his ride well the guy never shut up no he actually had more lines in the episode than uh, the mandalorian <laughs> I, I believe did. that um yeah i i uh i love that that whole opening even that cool electric flute right so. yeah that's right <laughs> yeah, i have a snout yeah <laughs> it's kind of like willy Wonka, isn't it yeah well i mean kind and of the loopers that come running and do so, his, uh... but here's the thing in, in the next couple of scenes we find out something that happens in star wars lore that it's never been discussed before in any movie or show that I've ever seen that has anything to do with Star Wars is what happens when you have to take a dump in space. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is true. I, a I you need a vac tube, right? He needs a vac tube. But anyways, I, I think in the books, and I, I, I was kind of thinking about this, like um, they sometimes refer to the bathroom as the fresher. Um, so I thought it was kind of the difference of, of like calling it, you know, Hey, I'm going to go to the restroom to, I got to go to the John or, you know, it's like the fact that you just call it a vac tube. It was like kind of low brow, you know? Oh, well, for so, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to, when I go to a public place, I'm saying, do you, do you have a vac tube? <laughs> and, and, and let's be real. I mean, the Mandalorian, he, he requires no privacy, right? Because the vac tube was right there. Yeah. You know, you walk down or you climb down the stairs, you hang hang a quick left, and you you drop your trousers, and that that's 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 where that's how it happens, folks. That's how it happens in Star Wars space. Is you just sit there on a back tube, and God knows what happens. Actually, what happened to happen in my gym class in high school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but before be, before any of that happens, he somehow. Did you catch this? Like he somehow the first attempt at punching in a passcode into the little keypad opens up his weapon. It's like, right. like a, a allotment. Like eh, that was a little weird. Like he just tap 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 tap, and all of a sudden this door he, opens. He in put in he yeah he put in password. He put now in why password. Were, why 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 didn't the guy take the uh, weapons a weapon? I don't know, but I I I was watching. I did do a screen grab, and he actually typed in one two. Three, four, five. <laughs> so his password is password. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same password I have on my luggage. <laughs> no, I mean, you bring up a fair point. I, I mean, why? I almost kind of thought, like, was this a trap in itself? Like, he just keeps it. Or like, he has just so much confidence that he just is like, oh, whatever. Like, like yeah. that scene, maybe I'm overanalyzing it, but that scene actually threw me off to think that, oh, they're actually, like, bros like he knows the passcode to get into the thing oh sure oh. i can see that yeah like but well, in that the case yeah um well Unless he was looking for something else perhaps like an escape pod yeah so he's probably, um, at, he's probably in the back tube <laughs> before we keep going with the storyline uh we failed to mention the the ravenax uh which we see very oh, briefly yeah. Uh, this walrus alligator, basically creature, um, and uh, we also get to see the Mandalorian use that cool staff to, yeah. like, you know, it's like a big giant electric tuning fork. Uh, you, you know what that's from? I do. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the the original Boba Fett, uh, when it appeared in the cartoon uh, for the uh, Star Wars Holiday Special, yes. Which also, there's a shout out to Life Day 
Um, yeah, there is. There's two you, holiday special references. <laughs> yeah. So the original uh, Boba Fett carried a long staff like that in the cartoon. So, hmm. yeah. And uh, it's it's probably one of the best things that came out of the Star Wars holiday special. But uh, well, they made they, they actually made the Boba Fett like uh, action figure have one, I think, if I recall. I don't I don't think the the original uh, action figure did, but they may have came out with a, a later issue. Maybe oh, that's right. He, the original one had like the uh, the rocket that shot out of his back that like, right. kids choked on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's two. There's you're right. There's two references to the infamous um, Star Wars holiday special. Now, was I, Arthur in this episode? Yeah, yeah. B. Arthur was in this episode too. Yeah, so. Okay. I almost wonder if that was like uh, John Favreau's, like you know, someone had a dare. If you can like tie, somehow tie in the holiday special well, now, to hey, the show. Have you heard the reports where he wants to do a a new Star Wars holiday special? No. Yes, he has said that. He said that he was. Just Come on, like, John. John. Okay, was he drunk or? Was, was John, he if you're bad. listening, if you're <laughs> listening, and you know he is. You're, you're this is you're not money with this one you're, it's so not I, money i want to see him do it if, no. he, if he can pull this off like why not do give him the holiday special Let's because the can. man a mandalorian race is cool man right. is like true. seeing seeing half the cast all strung out on quaaludes not cool we don't need that maybe he can improve it yeah uh, we'll see yeah um be worse we digress so another, one of the other cool things is that he does open up that that cabinet with all the weapons. But what he also sees is he sees like it's almost like he's in like you remember uh, you go into Spencer Gifts back in the eighties and nineties, and you look at the poster <laughs> section and you're yeah. flipping through those the, the poster display, which is like this big old fan of like you flip through all the different posters, you find the one you like, and you pull the tube out from down below. Well, that's what happens when you found all the carbonite of all <laughs> of all of his bounties, just like chilling. He, so I I, I, I didn't did look, look, I didn't look, nor nor was I. Uh, I don't maybe if there was anything there, but were there any uh, likenesses that we knew um, in the frozen and carbonite, or was that just kind of a thing? I try I tried to wreck it, but I didn't see. Anybody. I I didn't see any yeah. of it that looked looked familiar. So, um, but I did wonder though, did he recognize some of those people because they were all maybe kind of he all did. Same. Yeah. yeah, like he himself was like, oh, they got Paco and they got you know. Uh, chili and they got I don't know what's up with all the Mexican food names. Yeah, I I don't know. I just assumed that they it's a Western, so Paco and all right. Paco. I was trying to think of like what the girl's name would be. Um, so, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> Chris is just shaking his head right like, now. No, just stop talking. <laughs> Anyways, so so he gets tossed, he gets tossed into the carbonite thing, and psh, there it is. Like, and, and he's he's part of the collection. Nice to have a portable one. I didn't know that you could make those. So I thought you just had to go to Best Bin. Like a portable it's true. carbonite, like not bad. Yeah, it's like the Keurig of carbonite. Yep. <laughs> and then cool. and then fast fast forward, we get to go hang out with the dude from Lost. Yeah, that's right. Um not really, but yeah. <laughs> Carl Weathers. That's right. He goes to collect the bounties on the uh, the, the pucks. So he's got these bounties. I think Jack just got the reference. <laughs> no, I know who Carl Weathers is. But I was like, I was the lost. I was like going. He was in one episode of Lost. He was in the one with um, the TV show that. Uh, oh, with uh, that. Mickey with and that. Paolo. Razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Now I got it. His name in this episode or this show is called Grief Karga. Yeah, that's it's a cool name. Um hmm. yeah, it's spelled G R E E F. So not the not the usual grief. But uh not the Charlie Brown grief. The Charlie Charlie Brown gr grief. I like this like little uh you know cantina that that, that he goes into and you kind of get that old school vibe as well. So. Very most icily. Mm -hmm. um, so when you walk, he walked into that cantina, it looked like you could see someone who resembled Bosk. Okay. Um, maybe not Bosk himself. Right. Actually, I can't remember. Is Bo Bosk survived Empire, right? I assume that he did. But the one that, that was in there, the Transdoshian, tra I think they're called Transdoshians. 
Yeah. Um, he, I thought he was like a younger one. Like he almost looked like he was like, I don't know, thinner around the face. Um, anyway, um, yeah, this, this meet and greet here, um, basically he's trying to earn more money, um, and, uh, everything that he's got to offer. Um, basically he doesn't have enough. It's like, there's not enough to go around and whatever is around, there's not enough money for it. So kind of almost feel like the galaxy is maybe in like a recession. Yeah. Is it like he, he, the uh, Mandalorian didn't seem shocked that there wasn't enough money. They didn't have his full payment. Yeah. Well, he, he tried, he tried pulling back the pucks though, didn't he? Or the, whatever they were like, he was like, all right, I'm out. And then, then Carl Weathers is all like, Oh, quit being dramatic or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, he wasn't going to take the Imperial credits. Imperial credits don't right. matter. Right. The empire, right. the empire is gone. Yeah. Um, but he did like the calamari flan, I think is what flan. Yeah. Yeah. Flan. Yeah. And my, my, and who doesn't, who doesn't like flan? So not only is it a food, but it's also money. Mm hmm. <laughs> Um, so Jack, Jack, call, l l l give Jack a little in, insert a, a, a Jack history lesson for Star Wars really quickly. Um, calamari in Star Wars. Do you know what that is? It, like it, is it, it, it is not fit like a food that you eat, but it oh. is aquatic animal related. I don't know. So you remember um, it's a trap. You, you know who said that? Who said that? No. Oh boy. I don't recall. Okay. That's okay. Right. Well, the calamari are a race. Oh, I know. Um, who I know. I know who you're talking about now. Yeah, like he's got a fish head. He's a race, but they, yeah. uh, they also yeah. are uh, famous uh, manufacturers of ships, oh. calamari cruisers. Oh, okay. So those, those big cruisers that they use to battle um, the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. Yep. It's, yeah. And then the the Radisson, which uh, Leia was on in the last chapter. The hotel, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe I messed that up. Maybe it's not the Radisson. Maybe I'm thinking of the hotel. <laughs> so the Radis, I think, is is what it is. Anyway, um, I digress. Um, let's get back to to this episode, though. Um, so, Carl Weathers, grief, Carga <laughs> gives him a. a a different kind of face-to-face -face deal and not a bounty puck because clearly he needs something more. So that's a unique opportunity. Well, what was interesting though, before you do that, he sure. actually says, how, how many, how many bounties do you have? And he's like, I'll, these, I'll take them all. Right. Yeah. He was willing to do it all. But then Carl jumps in and is like, Hey, and this is the first reference to the guild, mm -hmm. right? right. So there's, there's a bounty hunter guild. So um, he says well, there's, there are other guild members. So like leaning towards the idea that he's got to play, you know, his cards right as well. He needs to have other bounty he's hunters. Spread, he's got to spread wanna, it wanna, out. Yeah, he wants to have other bounty hunters want to play ball. Yeah. But, but he says, I got something else for you. Big time. Well, I guess he didn't uh, the Mandalorian say, you know, he said 5,000. That doesn't even pay for fuel in this day and age. Right. right. That's, that's what goes to my whole like recession, recession idea. Like clearly with it. times are, times are tough. Yeah. So, um, and then to kind of get down to the nitty gritty of like times are tough. This job that he goes to, to uh, find, right. Oh wait, am I skipping that? No. Yeah. He goes to this, this job first because he, um, I thought it was interesting because he goes through a door and then there's like a basically a gonk droid, but it's kind of a fancy gonk droid leads him into this. So it's like a double door kind of area, which opens up and reveals stormtroopers. But not not before speaking about recession on his way out like over to this place. Not, he also passes by like at least two or three like seemingly down and out and or homeless and or hooked on spice. Um, yeah. Residents of that of that of that planet that they're on just kind of like sitting there in the, in the back in the back alley. So yeah, it was definitely a rough and tumble atmosphere. One of them looked um, like they were hooked on V, you know, like video VR glasses. Like yeah. Slumped over in the corner. Yep. Yeah. We are, so time to right. tell since the empire has been destroyed. That's right. That's absolutely right. Uh, it's actually a nice tie into a, um, one of the books I read, I, I forgot which one it was, but it was, it was the, the, the what happened the aftermath. It actually is the book. Star Wars aftermath, but it was definitely like this this period of strife in between where the Empire 
you know, falls and it's in between the empire falling and then the resistance starting, um, you know, the, what do they call it? I forgot what it was. So anyways, the new, the new form of government, but, but you're, you're right. So it's, it's, it's definitely a, a rough time at some point. We, but we, I don't know what the timeline is with the Mandalorian yet. Have we established that? We, we know that it's after return of the Jedi. We don't know yep. exactly how many years after. Okay. So, and we know that it's before the force awakens. So, but you're right. We did see some familiar faces when that door opened, and those are the familiar faces of the bucket heads. <laughs> they were those suits were grimy. Rough. Yeah, they, they they weren't white. They weren't like the normal. They were rough. That are yeah. Just, yeah. And and I just kind of imagine like like those are his hired hands. Like they're basically like maybe he was an imperial governor clearly at some point in time, and like this is all that he has left. Yep. So I was kind of thinking about that with like the whole security setup there where he's got the, you know, it's like that fancy gonk droid is like just a little piece of whatever he's got left and he's just kind of sitting on. But this is the point where Jack got excited because he thought he was watching the crossover with Man in the High Castle uh, <laughs> with, with Werner Herzog in the, you know, sitting there, um, which is the first non British sounding empire. Um, you know, commander. True. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was the, definitely the first uh, German accent that we had. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and this was a great scene. I love, love the standoff um, that occurs there. That that cool line about like the the whole four to one odds, and he's like, I like those odds. Uh, yeah, I like those odds. Yeah. yeah, that was that was nice. Um, so he gets this offer, which is very vague. There's um, we learn about chain codes, uh, f- tracking fobs in this episode, and the big coup de grace is this this uh, Beskar that's mentioned. So the Beskar is the armor. Um, he's offered up. He basically gets an advance on this job and has said, look, I have a whole camto of Beskar, which I assume just means a crap ton of this armor. So because we don't we don't know what a camto is. Um, but anyway, uh, this this metal though is is awesome. We we it opens up kind of some myths, you know, behind the the Mandalorian. I, I love this this whole aspect of this yeah metal and how important that metal is to them. We find out a little bit more about that in the, in the the next scene. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you on that. That was like the we start you, you you in the in the next scene you get to see a little bit more about that. You get some flashbacks involved as well. Um, which is very, very cool. Um, but there is, I did a little bit of research online um, about that metal. And oh, okay, cool. There, well, let, let's get into the next scene, actually, and then we can talk about what that, that background of it is. You know, you know, before we go to that next scene, this was, <laughs> that was a good long wait there. I was glad you stayed with best, us. Best out of the show. And, uh, you know, before we get to, to what Chris... Chris was going to talk about. I just wanted to say how awesome is it to watch TV that is not punctuated by commercials? Yes. Like it frees up the, the movie storytelling, the cinematography aspects, the whole the whole way. Like there's just no gotta gotta lead up and lead you on a cliffhanger so that you'll come back. You know, it's just one solid sweeping. Okay, Chris. Sorry. Next scene. Yeah, no worries. So the next thing there, um, he brings uh, the Besk- Beskar in his calamari uh, flan um, to a character that is known as the Armorer, uh, which appears to be a female Mandalorian. Um, hands over the loot, and it's like, here, I got this. And she's like, ooh, look at that. All right. She goes, let's let's see what we can do about this. So she takes that, that chunk of metal and there's a really cool sequence um, about how that how she placed that metal into like whatever you know um, equipment she's using to melt things down, and it just starts melting down. She starts making a cast of something, right? Um, which is awesome because then it goes into what looked like some flashbacks um, of his childhood because he she says that there's enough here for a pauldron, and then some more for the. Um, Oh God! What was it? We were found, found, found links more for the foundling, which is um, presumably the ki- the children of the right. Mandalorian children. So you go through like some some flashbacks of uh, 
what appeared to be like um I think there was like droids taking over like his town, right? Or wherever he lived, or his village or wherever it was. And it's just actually kind of cool because it kind of throws back and almost provides a little bit of a human side to the Mandalorian of like his his upbringing and talking a little bit about like or showing at least some of the humanity behind his character and how he was essentially um, orphaned and or went through like a real tough, you know, uh, tough time as a kid being separated from family, et cetera. You don't want to get too many details, but you can kind of get the, the feel and the sort of what's going on. Um, which is awesome, and then after that, like she she busts out this pauldron, which is like like a nice nice fancy way of saying a, a shoulder plate. <laughs> but uh, um, but if you are uh, know anything about the um, the Mandalorian armor made of this stuff, it's known to be able to to withstand some significant um, energy dissipation and like you know from. It can deflect, you know, blaster bolts to it's actually also known to be able to, to take a blow from a lightsaber, which is interesting. Um, so I wanted to learn a bit more about that metal. And I did look it up. And there is uh, there is although it was not described in the show, um, there is a uh, there was a refer to the great purge, uh, which is what the armor armor had said, although it's not confirmed, but it could be uh, tied to the siege of Mandalore. Uh, which is when uh, Ashoka Tano attempted to free Mandalore from the resurrected former Sith Lord, Darth Maul. Hmm. Yeah. Which, which, if Darth Maul makes his way into the Mandalorian, you heard it here, folks. All right. I'm calling it. Okay. Matt, I think Matt doubts you, though. He does. He doubts you. That's all right. Time, time, just you imagine how imagine how cool that would be if we get to see Darth Maul in the Mandalorian. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna spoil you on anything. So, um, and I don't want the listeners to write in and and say that you know Chris is wrong on this, but you'll you'll find out in time. I don't know. I, I think he's saying you're wrong, Chris. Oh, he, he's, he's probably alluding to the fact that Darth Maul dies in Zed Siege, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> did he, did, did maybe, he, maybe, he there, maybe there will be Darth Maul in the Mandalorian via flashbacks. flashbacks. Ooh, I like where you're going with that. What do you I, <laughs> just, just because I threw... For those of you listening at home, which is all of you, I am now flipping Matt off. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And the ones that can see that on Crazy Ink TV. I'm <laughs> just trying. I'm just trying to help you. Oh, uh, you know, bef- um, we're uh, we're talking about a couple different things. I don't mean to jump around. I meant, wanted to mention the character of Doctor Pershing uh, that comes out and is very concerned about this uh, reward or this bounty. You know, specifically being alive. So, right. Just wanted to yeah. bring up his character because I think we'll probably see this character again. Yes. So. I agree. Concur. Uh, I concur. I hear you. Uh, you know, one thing about this this whole scene where he's getting his armor. Um, the first time through that I watched, you know, he enters this dark space, and you kind of think like, oh, he's still in some kind of slum or lower, you know, kind of like. But no, as soon as he enters into that that dark hallway, he's actually in the sanctuary of his clan. And there's a moment where kids are running by and you realize that when he's sitting in that armory and she's making that metal, there are no doors behind him. He's sitting with his back to the door opening, which in any Western or any bad guy or good guy will tell you, you never sit with your back against the door. No. Nope. Um, but I thought it was while, while Bill Hickok made that mistake. <laughs> I knew you'd have some Western reference to bring in there, but I just wanted to point out how he's making himself vulnerable in this space. He's safe in this, 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 uh, you know, clan home, um, right. so to speak. So, uh, I just, it's just interesting to note that, that aspect, um, and that he's also kind of doing something. Uh, even though he's collecting these bounties, he's clearly doing something for his clan by the fact that he wants the foundlings to have the armor. 
He's doing right. something kind of for a community um, or a family unit that he's a part of. Um, and one one other kind of shout out to a show that Jack and Jay and I have been watching and podcasting about, which is The Watchmen. Um, Chris, I know you've been watching it as well, right? Don't know if you're caught up or not, but there was a a moment. I'm sorry, in I was muted. Yes, I am. I'm caught up. Oh, okay. There was a moment in a recent episode, and I don't feel like this is is major spoilers. So if you're not caught up, caught up on the Watchmen, please please don't think that this is a spoiler. But there's a character that mentions that masks equal trauma equal pain, and I kept thinking about that moment when you see in his visor as he's wearing the mask these flashes of his past and the armors being built for him. I thought. Wow, this this really showcases a theme that Watchmen uh, addressed in, in their show. So, yep. Um, anyway, so they ripped it off. <laughs> no, I just think we can kind of see how masks still relate to. Tr okay, you're just messing with me. Fine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> so let it be written. So, so let, let it be read. read. Um. All right. After he gets his armor, what happens? Chris. Uh, so after he gets his armor, um, so he's got the, I'm trying to remember. Okay. So he, that's when he goes and, and lands on that planet. Right. Yeah. Where he, yeah. Where he meets uh, a couple of local um, fauna, <laughs> if you will. Uh, I forgot what they were called. They're uh, blurred. They're blurred. 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 So the best resemblance would be a um, cross between um, Pumbaa from the Lion King and a rhinoceros. I was going to say it, that. I was going to say a dewback and a tauntaun. Oh boy, <laughs> Def, definitely very dewbackian. <laughs> uh, so, well, he, here's the thing: is that he's yeah. he's he's got his sniper rifle out and he's just kind of scoping out what's going on in the distance. Yes. I thought he I thought he was going to take a shot at that one that he saw in his little thermal um, scope. And then very a la A New Hope, you know, what happens is that right in the middle of his scope jumps up, just like the uh, the sand people did to uh, to Luke, um, jumps in front of his scope and it starts going at him and attacking him. Right. Loved that callback. Yep. It was subtle, and, uh, but expected, and it still worked. And just like Obi-Wan did in the original... <laughs> He comes to rescue. Who comes to rescue uh, our, our fearless Mandalorian? Nick Nolte, the ball-headed guy. Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> and he sounded like Colonel Potter. Like every time yeah. I, kept, like, <laughs> I kept thinking about Colonel Potter from MASH. Um, <laughs> I think I think the character's name was Kuhl. K-U-I-L-L. Kiel. Huh. Q it was K-U-I-L-L. Nice. But, uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was very cool how they did that, though, because that, that was clearly a throwback to A New Hope. And um, but yes, yeah, so we, we meet this new 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 character who is, seems to be uh, a wise, uh, sagely individual who reveals that our fearless Mandalorian has not been the first to come this way. Exactly. Now, did you think he is he an Ugnaught? Did you assume that he, he is, is that what he, he is? is okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't look up to, to verify, like, is that officially? But he looked like an Ugnaught. So. Yeah. He looks different from the Rogue One Ugnaughts, but I'm pretty sure he is. Mm -hmm. I'll look it up. A little taller. There, he was kind of tall in one moment. And I was like, oh. But uh, really liked his character a lot. Um, definitely a, a bit of a grouchy old man kind of aspect. He's like, I just want them out of here. These he kinda, It kind of reminded me of me. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I just felt that I was looking in the mirror when I was did watching. Did you that. identify with this? I, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Confirmed. I like, the, I like the I like the dialogue between the two of them because he says, "Yeah, I've helped a lot. I've helped a lot of these a lot of people out before." And he goes, "Well," and they died. He goes, "Well, maybe I don't want your help." <laughs> I just thought it was cool back and yeah. forth with him. Yeah. Um, and and how curt he was. Like it, it's funny because here the Mandalorian is a man of few words, and yet this guy actually tells you <laughs> when he's done talking. Yeah, <laughs> I've spoken. I've yeah. spoken. The Mandalorian just walks away. He's got nothing to say. Yeah. yeah. These these two are great together. Um, 
So, so he says, "Hey, the only way you're going to get there, yeah, the blurg, you, the blurg. You got you, you got to get down with the, you got down and dirty with this blurg here." Um, like, and, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, yeah, and we get a montage. It's not really a montage, really. but it's, it's, it's kind of it's like a montage. It's kind of it's like a montage. Hero. Yeah, they, they, he he builds a budding relationship with this blurg, right? And he gets down to gets down to it and like puts his hand on his head. And he's just like, they're there. Well, and once he realized he had to use the blurg, because he wanted, oh. you know, he, he after that he's like, okay, I got to do what I got to do. Well, he was nervous because it was revealed that these female blurgs <laughs> eat their mates after doing it. No, so, okay. it's like yeah. whoa, it's okay, the stuff happening here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, did you? Know and, it, and it's not like they're that attractive. I, I might take a pass on it on myself. I just uh, have you seen the men though? Oh I don't know. Gosh, they're they're beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> they wear feathers and everything. No. <laughs> um, I like the real world aspects of of this show and and the fact that at some point you know he has his whole arm in one of those blurgs, right? He does. And later, when you see it pulled out, like his little this little control panel has been busted right there on his left arm. You know, it's yeah. like, it's, it's, but I yeah. believe his pauldron is what saved his arm. Oh yeah. Well, I, it definitely saves it from, uh, it's a bounty shot. Yes. So, which, which we're coming to. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, he, he learns magically how to write a blur with, I assume that takes him less than a day. <laughs> <laughs> had to win the blurg over. Yeah, uh, I also like. I saw, I saw with the flowers and candy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the flowers and candy. No, I think he brought that to the uh, the cool, you know. So, okay. um, so he learns how to ride these damn things, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then there, then there is definitely a frolicking montage <laughs> over this. Uh, we, we find out why he needs to ride the blur is because there's these huge like gaps and like these almost crazy like desert you know landscape that they had to to, to run across but it looks like it hasn't, hasn't rained in a, hasn't rained in a while uh, not, not a bit um but it seems like it was a, a, quite the lengthy journey until they finally roll up on camp yeah um so uh this kind of sets up basically like what is like kind of the last act um and i really love how this episode was broken down simple efficient you know, straight and I get it with some of the Star Wars movies, like there's a lot of characters they're introducing. They're gonna have all of these these stories. But what was great about the Mandalorian is it really boiled things down, you know. Um and uh he's he's scouting out this place and gets interrupted by this bounty droid IG. Well, I like how, I like how he doesn't he doesn't like droids. Yeah. Droids. I, I assume there's an Indiana Jones flashback here where we're gonna <laughs> find it. Maybe it goes to what Chris's theory here is that it, it was a droid invasion that killed his family. That's probably what it was. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't trust droids. He doesn't like droids. They've they've never properly addressed a, a droid rebellion, but it's it's been played up a couple times in, in different stories of, of yeah. legends now. So I saw it in BSG. <laughs> Well, I would not want to take on one of these IG one one droids. Um, no, he's quick draw, dude. This is this was absolutely my favorite part of the episode, and I'll, I'll tell you, I got super excited. This is one of the, of the scenes that was in the the trailer for the first season, uh, because at first glance, I thought it was IG eighty eight. We all knew IG eighty eight. Well, I mean, I mean, anybody who's a, a nerd knew about IG eighty eight from uh, the original the original um, trilogy. Um, and if you play any of the um, from you know Star Wars for mobile games like Galaxy Heroes, you know you know of IG88 and some of the other droids. So IG88 is a, an assassin droid that is a, apparently a bounty hunter. That's um, I'm not sure it was unclear as to whether or not he's he's operating uh, autonomously or if he is um, programmed by somebody who's directing him. Hmm. Um, not quite sure, which could be yeah. interesting to find out. Um, but the the efficiency and the dance of his battle oh, was so cool, so cool to watch. Um, but first, he actually shoots the Mandalorian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
But I'm this, in the guild. Yeah, but there it is. Here, here's the second reference to the guild, right? So the second he makes the reference of, "Hey, I'm in the guild. I'm in the guild." IG88 stops. He's like, "Oh, hey, bro, how are we gonna do this? Like, let, let's work this out." Yeah, he, he, he said to split it, but he wanted he he wanted the credit. Yeah, he wants the 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 uh, reputation the credits. Yeah. Right? <laughs> He's like, well, I'm going to need an answer before I proceed. <laughs> well, that, that's true in any we any Western. The gunfighter, he wants the rep. You know, when you kill I'm someone that's, that has a reputation, you want that I killed such and such. Yeah. So, I, I like the exchange between these two, and immediately, IG this IG. Um, I, I know I want to call him IG88 too. Uh, it's it's like so right there, um, but loved every minute of of this. Um, character i is he dead for good oh sorry i'm jumping um i i know jack's mad at me that i'm jumping ahead i'm, I'm kidding that, but, but i did want to say the scene reminded me you guys have seen butch cassidy the sundance kid right? i knew it i knew it i was just waiting for you the end of the the end the end of the when in the bolivia and, the, and they get recognized and they get they're outnumbered a thousand to one and all the shootings going on and they keep going around. that's what the scene reminded me of because then you yep. even had the gatlin laser gun Yes, it just was. Uh, it looked like a wow. This is Butch Cassidy Sundance kid. Yeah, uh, what's what's interesting too is that um, you may not realize this or catch this unless you look at the credits or if you check on IMDb. Um, but Taika Watiti, also known from uh, being the director of uh, Thor Ragnarok um, and a number of other films as well, was actually the voice of IG Eleven. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also the the new movie, the Jojo Rabbit, right? Yeah, and jo yeah, exactly. Jojo Rabbit, the one that um, I believe Nick has already seen. Is going to do a review for us on the Ramble Cast After Dark, the other show. Ding. <laughs> um, yes, Jack. Uh, back to Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I I I got that vibe as well. I really liked it. Um, there's something even just the way the pillars looked and the fact yeah, they're they're pinned was. down. Um, also, a, a little subtle callback to uh, Return of the Jedi because the Mandalorian's like, I got it. Like, he's like over there doing the, the thing with like Han where he's trying to hotwire it while IG 88's right. like taking all of the fire. Um, so, I really liked that subtle callback as well, not hitting you over the head with it. Um, and uh, it's funny that they get into this this moment and and this is the other great thing about the battle droid or this bounty droid is that he's got to self-destruct <laughs> and he kept telling him not really him not to. to use <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's just so hilarious this is like now i will kill myself like it's just he said Everything. like three he said like three times and yeah he, and he the mandalorian said no wait no <laughs> don't do it I kept thinking that this was going to come in later, like that he was going to use that 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 bomb, but no. Uh, it gave it some comic relief because it is, a, you know, it's a it's a it's a cool scene going on as a gunfight, mm -hmm. but he also had some comic relief in as the gunfight is going on. I thought it was pretty oh, well yeah. done. No, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so at at some point though, yeah, he just gets into this dead stance, like, well, there's nothing else to do. I can't advance it. And then the Mandalorians like cover me, and then they they. He gets the uh, IG one one gets shot, um, and uh, but in doing so, the Mandalorian is able to grapple the Gatlin gun, uh, laser gun, and, and destroy everybody. So, which was another little scene that was kind of teased in the trailers early on, and uh, looked so cool, so worthwhile to see that uh, how that played out, um, and uh, they kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So well, how 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 cool was that scene though when um <clears throat> he's trying to figure out like how he's gonna how they're gonna overcome the um the onslaught of all these guys and all of a sudden they 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 wheel up that that turret right mm -hmm. and and there's just a very very cool like almost um Indiana Jones esque like just the flourish of, of, of jumping around and flanking the guy taking yanking him off the gun and then, and then just like riding that gun like he's a cowboy i mean yeah. insert the cowboy references again of course yeah no that's um and i was i was wondering too because so that gets to the next part where they can't get through that big huge heavy mm -hmm. door 
and they use the the laser gun and then the, the door kind of falls in i'm trying to think of and i know it's been used a lot but i was trying to think of like uh, any famous movies that might have used that you know that the, the, the bad guys come through the the door and it falls forward um i know it's been used at some point but hundreds and uh, hundreds of times but i can't it just seems really classic you know that door falling in and there you have the two supposed heroes standing there because at this point right. you're kind of you're kind of with you know the mandalorian you're like i really don't care who this is but i want to see them dead yeah right well it's the title of the, ep- the show is mandalorian so no but i mean you want to see whoever the bounty is <laughs> no i know i'm just kidding oh. that time so uh what did, what did you think about this this re- reveal here jack were you you know this i didn't know i didn't know it was going to be baby yoda you didn't know it was going to be baby what yoda baby yoda okay yeah, i didn't know that's good i mean i'm glad that i didn't know i apparently i had was, no idea yeah no idea I'm glad because he's, he said because he says it's because when he gets the code from the the guys that hired him he knew what he said it's oh it's it's a bait it's someone under fi- someone that's 50. yeah so he, he knew that the code was an age group but he but it's like even the droids said, "Well, there's different species that age differently." What a great so, red herring! So yeah, um, as soon as I saw those ears, that silhouette of the ears, I was like, yeah. "Holy cow!" And then that flips yeah. around, and it's really nice timing on that reveal. And, because uh, when they when they because in it's those little circular thing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. well, who's who's in that? That's, that's in worth, a worth all this. Net. Yeah, what's worth all this death and destruction? Who's in there? So yeah. they were they so were I, they I, were protecting him. I immediately wanted to search and see like what is like I don't think I've ever referenced or heard um, what like race or like you know species Yoda actually was, and apparently there isn't one. Yeah, it's always been unknown because he was the last of his kind, or was he? Or so we thought, right? So. Uh, <laughs> This this sets up a really great mystery. I I had heard that this first episode was going to have something universe changing, and I'm like, well, how can they change the universe of Star Wars? What's going to be such a big deal? And I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. This is this is nice. So that caught me completely off guard. I so no does, it, does that I mean no he's, he's 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 uh, force sensitive automatically? No, I don't think so. No. Yeah. Maybe he's maybe he does have a predisposition. I did kind of wonder. This is okay. here was my one. Yes, it's a cute little Yoda baby. Okay, <laughs> but a if it is force sensitive, how do we know that it's not controlling the minds of all of these other people to protect it? True. Also, Cushing, pushing whoever his name is, yeah. Doctor, really wants it alive. Yes. So why is that, right? Maybe he wants manipulate it, grow it, manipulate. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Maybe they want to have a dark Yoda. Ooh, oh, dude, some... dark Yoda would be awesome. Yeah, I want dark Yoda. Dark Yoda. <laughs> Could you imagine that dark? That'd be amazing. A, a, a dark side Yoda. I hope. I hope pushing gets it or Cushing, whatever his name is. I hope the man learns. Per- pushing. So you Pershing. want a dark? You want a dark Yoda? I want a dark side. Who doesn't want? Why wouldn't you not want a dark side Yoda? That would be awesome. How, how can how, how can you beat the dark? How can you beat the? Uh, you can't beat a dark Yoda. Have Have you seen the the last season of the Clone Wars? No. Okay. However, no. as of today, I can watch all of them. Okay. Well, I'll just say that there is something that happens towards the end of the Clone Wars that uh, really showcases this idea of a dark Yoda. So, really. Yeah, little little okay. teaser there. Of course, it is in the very last episodes of the last season of uh, Clone Wars. So, um, you know, Clone Wars is, is an interesting mix because there is some chronological stories that take place, but there are also stories that are kind of just sidebars and it jumps around a lot. Um, so it's like, yeah. Well, here, here's another theory, right? So mm-hmm. we know that this baby Yoda is 50 years old. Okay. So if we try and create or recreate the timeline, we'll say let's let's give this fifteen years after the destruction of the empire. We'll just throw that out there. Okay. I mean, 
those those stormtrooper uniforms had about 15 years of the wear on them. That's why I look at it, right? So okay. if we go 15 years back, that means that would be 30. So when Luke was in his 20s, when he became a Jedi, so baby Yoda here was born in between, if I'm doing my math, in between episode three and four. Okay. Um, no, because it would have to be 50 years after that. So it would be right. It would be the Mandalorian. If we're saying the Mandalorian's 15 years after Return of the Jedi, they were looking at minus 35 years from there. So 35 yeah. years prior to Jedi, we'll probably put this put us in right around the Clone Wars time, wouldn't it be? I would think so, around Clone Wars time. So who was Yoda getting it on with? During the Clone Wars, I think that's a better question. And so, so <laughs> uh, unless unless he can just reproduce himself through the through the Force, someone tells me that he was having some booty calls, <laughs> probably post Count Dooku battle because he was <laughs> BA in that battle. Um, so I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe he had a bedside Yoda. And now is Yoda the one that said he, he was the last of his kind? Because I do remember Did. that. So he's obviously he, Yoda lied. He's a lying because he knew because he, he knew baby Yoda was out there. Well, here's the thing, though. So from everything I understand, you have to know baby. It wouldn't be like one of those things where wait, I'm the father. No, I, I think I, he wouldn't have to. Be, he wouldn't have to go on Montel or what? what he's, he's, gonna say, he's got like Maury Povich coming. Maury Povich, you are the father. <laughs> oh, I did. I didn't use the force. Oh man, no way. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't force pull out. What? <laughs> <laughs> they have a, a Yaddle on there as well. She was know. cheating on me. Okay. <laughs> well, um, that's okay. Uh, Jack, you have any thoughts about Baby Yoda? I, I didn't. You know, I, didn't, I forgot that he was. The, I you know. So we know that Yoda had to know about Baby Yoda. I'm not saying that Yoda knew because okay. he had. He, come on, he had. He's Yoda. All right. So from what I understand, this is taking place on the very edge of this this galaxy, right? So it's taking place in some some planets that maybe not might not be in the the middle. Um and and we've heard a lot about wild space as well. So maybe maybe these creatures came from a I don't know. I have no idea. This or is close it wide open. What if Yoda was cloned? Ooh, if it took place during the Clone Wars. That's that, uh, but yeah. still, still, wouldn't he know? Mm, well, I don't know. Yeah, I need to get your DNA here. Why? Count, Count Dooku could have uh, done a little. Well, not only that, but the Emperor. I mean, that that Emperor was pretty sneaky. Yeah, I mean, but, but yeah, anyway, like that. crazy crackpot theories going from Yoda getting some bedside um, Yodet coming after <laughs> after the uh, the Battle of Dooku. Maybe Sheev Palpatine could have gone in and 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 collected a sample of Yoda's DNA and cloned him. Just took Who a knows? syringe out of him while he was meditating. Could have been. We have no idea. You I, 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 I want I want I want to <laughs> hope though uh, Yoda was getting his. Let's just let's just go on the edge, sure. air on the side of that. Maybe Yoda was getting some action. I, I'm looking at Yoda and thinking there's no chance for that. Yeah, but you also look at those blurgs and you're like. Somehow they have to reproduce. Yeah, I guess that's you true. Know? So, anyways, but then where's no. the other? Where's the Yoda at? Is she that's, still? Is the Yoda at? That's alive? my question. That's my question. Who knows? Maybe she's under under wraps. Maybe 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 Pershing has her already. Either way, um, it was a very cool reveal to see a little baby Yoda esque character. Okay, in the floating bassinet. Other question I'm going to throw out to you guys: How does this change the Mandalorian moving forward? He's already in for a penny, in for a pound. He's got the armor. He's already used part of that, that money. So, what's he well, going to do? He, he so he, I don't think he turns Yoda, baby Yoda, in. I think he I don't has, think so either. He's got that. He's got that thing for kids. Yes. You know, and you see, when you saw the flash, I think that's why mm -hmm. we saw the flashback where he he's locked in and he's covered up. He's not going to turn baby. That's why he killed the, the uh, other. I don't think. Maybe. I don't think he killed. I don't think he. Because that bounty guard, it's it, since it's a droid, it can come back, right? They can rewire it and come back, I right? Know. I'm maybe and that, and that droid's going to come after him and come after him 
and Baby Yoda. Well, IG-11 has only been credited for one episode. So <laughs> I think he's dead. He's a smoking... Uh, and, uh, yeah. But I don't think... I think uh, I think the Mandalorian does everything he can to save... Uh, and there, there's going to be people after him. And that's why we're going to have the... For the rest oh, of the season. definitely there's going to be people after. You don't... You don't turn your back on... Um, Turner. I don't know. I don't know what his name is. Uh, I didn't. I didn't write that down. Uh, who he made the deal with? Um, the devil, em- emperor, dictator, dude. Um, <laughs> so uh, I apologize for that. So I read. I was going to write it down, but I figured you would. So I, I, I do. I do write down a bunch of notes. That's that's for sure. So, um, all right. Any other crazy thoughts that you know moving forward with this series? Things things that you think might transpire over the next nine episodes that we're going to get nine more i don't know man i think it's gonna be a lot of fun though there's, a, there's still a ton of characters that we've not yet met this season that's true um like a lot of characters are they've, they've, um they've teased kara yeah which uh, I'm, I'm curious as to when we're gonna meet her so um, and, to, and to be fair um to be fair to any letter kenny fans <laughs> out there um <laughs> IMDb might be incorrect. I sure. actually think will definitely be incorrect with how many um cuz it looks like everybody on this epi- on the on the show is only slated for one, two or three episodes. So I have a, a distinct feeling that IMDb is not accurate with their episode um count. Yeah. I would All right. I, I would agree. Okay. With so there's still a chance for IG11. All right. I I I think that he has to come back and chase after uh, a Mandalorian. I think that would make it fun. It, it looked pretty smoking through his head, but you know, who knows? I mean, these, th- that IG 11 droid, I mean, it, it was, it was a monster. So hey, you fix it, rebuild it. Make it stronger, I, um, faster. Chris, you had mentioned after, you know, uh, just kind of in our own private message thread there, you'd, you'd mentioned, you know, how much you love, uh, John Favreau for this, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, John Favreau took a story. That he created a story. I shouldn't say he took one. Yeah. Like, this is an all original story that was written by. Um, I mean, there's a. I, I think he's he's got the writing credits along with George Lucas has is, is, has been an advisor to him. Um, like this is a really could be. I'm gonna say after after watching one episode, could be some of the best. Like like original Star Wars content that I've seen um, post the movies. Now we think about it, like I mean, it's a completely different take on the Star Wars universe. So, it, but you feel like you're in the Star Wars universe. Oh, yeah, that's that's the thing I really love about it is that it's it's definitely a new light. It's definitely a new take. It's super gritty, um, and uh, it's not the 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 fairy tale. Uh, force story, right? That you're that we've all been kind of used to slash force fed for better or for worse with the Star Wars trilogies. Um, I'm excited for this show. Like, I, I, I'm truly excited for the show. I think it has some significant potential. If the trail, if the 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 pilot episode is anything like any of the, the if any of the future episodes or anything like the pilot, I mean, it's going to be great. And I'll, I'll tell you, there's been a review. There's, a, I think they. To a bunch of reviewers, they released I think like thirty minutes of footage, which was a a combination of clips from the first three to four episodes. And everybody who has viewed this footage to review it um, says that the all twenty eight minutes of that what they got to see was amazing. So, um, for what that's worth, super excited. I'm all in. Can't wait till Friday to watch episode two. So nice that we're getting a bonus episode, or not a bonus, but the, the, we're getting that two hours, basically. Well, not two hours, because this was actually only 39 minutes. And at first I was like, oh, only 39 minutes. But man, I like how efficient the storytelling was. It wasn't like, right. we got to do this many minutes. It told told the story that he needed to in that amount of time. Uh, the music was great. Um, I I really enjoyed the, the soundtrack. I uh, immediately was just like, okay, I need to know more. So... Uh, Lud- Ludwig Gor- Goranson. I'm sorry if I'm, I know I'm bur- bur- murdering that, that name. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was brutal. Yeah. Thank you. So the, the Ludwig <laughs> part I get, 
Like I'm like, <laughs> the, 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 it's it's got that. Sound, it sounds like you just threw up in your mouth a little bit. <laughs> well, anyway, it is on iTunes right now, so you can check out the soundtrack. I've been loving it. Um, really, really great stuff there. And uh, whatever your name is, great job. <laughs> thanks, Ludwig. So, Ludwig, thanks for coming back. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to mention uh, Dave Filoni, who directed the the episode. Uh, I've loved loved his work with Rebels, and when I knew that he was attached to the show, I was just like, great, like. You know, I, I he's got that Star Wars knowledge that's very nuanced where he can throw in oops sorry there's my Siri going off um, where he can throw in that knowledge of the Mandalorians or throw in a, a creature like the Blurg which has appeared in, in other Rebel episodes yep. so there's just I don't know I just feel like having him a little bit behind the scenes and I, I don't know right out of the gate I thought he took what Favreau put down on paper and, and made it come to life in a really great way. So, um, you know, fun, fun fact, um, there is a not debut, but there's a, a, a fairly fresh director involved this series. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard. Directs oh, yeah. Of, of an episode. Oh, really? Year. I did not know that. Yep. And I, at one point I had known, or I looked at like kind of that, that listing. I don't know if it's the fourth episode. Um, but uh, but yeah, she she has an episode that she and she's did. related to Clint Howard, right? No, she's Ron Howard's daughter. <laughs> I, know, I know that's the <laughs> oh, I missed that. No, it's Clint yeah. Howard's niece. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Um, I, any did other- want, I did want to, I did want to, I did want to say you guys said how the also the directing and the camera work was excellent in this this episode too. Yes, because there's a scene where they they pan up to the Mandalorian. We can't see his eyes, but it was like a Western where they're just looking at his face where you would, you, he's in, you know, he, there's a lot of Westerns that intimidating with the, just the face. Mm-hmm. You can't see his face, but I just, that was great camera work. So anyway, love the, love the angles, love the camera work, love the directing, the music, the writing so far, like Chris said, I'm in. And, and Jack, as far as like Star Wars, you know, coming from, from your, your perspective as someone waiting in line when you were 12, right? To see the first Star Wars? Uh, 76, I was um, 14. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to make you younger there. I know you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, it, I might have been, it was probably, I was probably 13. I probably wasn't 14 yet. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, ever since Star Wars came out, I mean, I think every Star Wars fan, young and old, have wanted a Star Wars TV show, live action. Am I right? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, Battle and, they use, and usually when they do a movie from a, t- a TV show from a movie, it usually doesn't work. Right. And, and growing up as a kid, I remember watching Battlestar Galactica and just being like, this is like Star Wars. Oh, but it's not. <laughs> I like Battlestar Galactica. I'm not going to bash it, but you had Planet of the Apes. They did Logan's Run. Tried to do a show. Animal House. They tried to do several shows from Animal House. You could go on and on and on and on. And most most movies that were hits didn't materialize a TV show. So maybe they needed to wait till the technology and streaming services and to make a show to make it work. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Chris. Any any thoughts about that? Other than you're on mute. You're muted. You mentioned that everybody wanted to have a, a Star Wars TV show growing up. Um, I don't think I did <laughs> then, but looking back, I wish I had. You know, like I I, I wish there was something um, because I mean, but at the same time, this is almost like a it's it's almost like a like a. You know, sweet redemption right because you think about like as a kid i was so into star wars and we never knew anything about like some of these shows that like you know the success like some of these post movie tv shows could have because it wasn't really a thing um and i don't think i knew as a kid that i wanted that because i would just watch the vhs tapes of star wars over again like you know that was just kind of like how i got my star wars fix um 
and then when the the second trilogy came out um i remember being so like overwhelmed and excited uh because those came out i believe like 98 99 a phantom menace came out and I, I was in college during that time and i remember being like so overwhelmed about this coming out and then going to the movie being like well shoot <laughs> <laughs> this this is what it's gonna look like for us fans and, and you know it didn't really didn't really resonate so hot right um and then that's when the other stuff started happening that's when you started seeing things like the clone wars coming out mm -hmm. like in, in the mid 2000s and and the other shows coming out and then um, when they announced that the, there's going to be another trilogy uh, led by J.J. Abrams, uh, or started by J.J. Abrams, I should say, that's when my excitement got like peaked again because we knew J.J. from from Lost, um, and then in Fringe and all these other great shows. Alias, Alias, right? So I never watched Alias. I was never into it. Maybe I should go back. Um, but like. This is a, like a new era of being excited about this stuff because yeah. we're coming. We're coming to the close of that third trilogy, and there's a lot of promise for what could be uh, the extension of my childhood again. I mean, you know, I'm going to be closing in on forty pretty soon, and I'm I'm still feeling like a kid watching this stuff. So, um, hopefully, with the success of the stuff like The Mandalorian. I, I really hope that the, the, the money and the effort gets dumped into other shows like uh, the Obi-Wan series, right? Oh, so yeah. The, I mean, uh, the future seems bright. For it does. It's, it, I, it really I, does. I think, again, because it's not on network television. Right. Even though network television has some great shows, but I think it only it's, it's only going to work if on, a sh on like the Disney Plus or, you know, Netflix or some, someone that's going to let, you know, I think the networks control too much. Well, yeah, and, and then you have those commercial breaks that I mentioned earlier. You know, yeah. it, it dictates like the the setup, the build, the the drop, the fall. Like, even yeah, music, you, so you, you don't you don't want to have to like have it be on network TV and then all of a sudden have like a a Nissan class Star Cruiser flying by because they have to put some product <laughs> shots in there. Like, that's, I'm glad that we don't have that kind of BS, you know, happening with this. Um, but yeah, man, it's it, it's it's. It, is the first glimpse into what Star Wars can be post movies, and it's ne I, it's never going to go away. And I'm 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 excited about it. <laughs> well, um, on that note, I think it'd be a good good time to wrap this 